NASA originally aimed to put people on Mars by the end of the 1980s. Yet, here we are 40 years later with little to no progress in terms of a crewed Mars mission from NASA. This apparent lack of progress from NASA is precisely why Elon Musk entered the space industry in 2002. By sending a colony of mice to Mars, he hoped to reinvigorate public interest in space and hopefully get NASA to do something. But he too quickly realized how tricky Mars really is, as his ambitious goals slipped from 2010 all the way to 2026 today. Don't get me wrong here, SpaceX is making outstanding progress with Starship, and it does look like they will be the first to get people to Mars. But what's a more realistic time frame for a crewed Mars mission from SpaceX? Well, starting off, let's take a look at the most apparent challenge in conducting a Mars mission, which is the rocket itself. SpaceX has been testing a variety of Starship prototypes over the past several months, but development is still only in the very early stages. For instance, SpaceX recently completed their first successful landing after high altitude flight with SN10, which was unreal. At the same time though, this was only an altitude of 10 kilometers. The international boundary for space is defined by the Kármán line, which is 100 kilometers in space. So Starship needs to fly 10 times the distance just to reach space, which means that Starship will have to fly at significantly higher velocities. Taking a look at the SN10 high altitude test, you'll see that the final engine cuts off at about T plus 420. If we assume that this is the apogee of the 10 km flight, this means that the average velocity of SN10 during its ascent is about 138 km per hour. We may have seen a peak of about 250 km per hour, but I don't think SN10 was traveling faster than that during any portion of its ascent. To put that in perspective, the escape velocity or the speed needed to get to orbit is 40,270 km per hour. That's 161 times the approximate max speed of SN10. Now, getting the extra power to reach these speeds isn't too terribly difficult. In theory, you can just go ahead and slap on a booster and dozens of more engines. As we learned with Falcon Heavy though, executing this is much more difficult. In 2011, SpaceX hoped that they could simply strap together three Falcon 9 boosters and call it a day, but this ended up taking them 7 years. Considering this, I suspect that developing a Starship booster with 35 Raptor engines won't be a walk in the park either. Anyways, once they get past the challenge of reaching such velocities, we have a handful of new concerns. First of all, there's the challenge of slowing down the super heavy booster and Starship from those speeds and landing them. We all know how difficult it was to land a Starship after a 10 km flight. Imagine a Starship skydiving from orbit at tens of thousands of kilometers per hour and then trying to belly flop land. Aside from nailing the landing, SpaceX will have to ensure that Starship is capable of handling the extreme temperatures during re-entry. NASA estimates that re-entering crew vehicles experience temperatures of up to 3400 degrees Fahrenheit or 1900 degrees Celsius. Speaking of extreme temperatures, Starship and its engines will also have to withstand extreme pressures. Over the past couple of Starship tests, we often saw engines fail during the flight. This issue only becomes more likely at high temperatures and pressures. Considering all of this and the fact that it took 7 years to develop the Falcon Heavy, I think developing Starship into a fully reusable launch vehicle by 2025 would itself be an outstanding achievement. Keep in mind that we don't even have a fully reusable rocket at this point in time, much less one that can carry 100 metric tons into orbit. Given that SpaceX didn't really focus on Starship development until summer of 2020, such a time frame would mean that SpaceX took Starship from basically nothing to an insanely powerful fully reusable launch vehicle within four and a half years. This would not only be extremely useful for Starlink, but SpaceX would also be able to really put Starship to the test with the dozens of Starlink launches in the second half of this decade. And in the meantime, they can transition into the next stage of Starship development, which would be actually getting to Mars. The first challenge that comes to mind when transitioning from an orbital launch vehicle to an interplanetary launch vehicle is fuel. To combat this, SpaceX plans to refuel Starship in space. This would be accomplished by launching one Starship that actually contains a payload, followed by another Starship that is just filled with fuel. In space, the two starships will connect and the one with the payload will be refueled and launched to Mars. Meanwhile, the fuel starship will return to Earth. Again, this is simple in theory, but likely a lot more difficult in practice. Once the payload starship is fueled though, the journey to Mars is quite easy. Starship can simply use the velocity it built up to leave the Earth to cruise to Mars. However, after Starship gets to Mars, we have a massive challenge which is landing the starship safely. Landing on Earth itself is extremely difficult but Mars is on a completely different level. For starters, the Martian atmosphere is 100 times thinner than that of the Earth. On the bright side, this means that Starship won't have to enter nearly as high temperatures when entering Mars, 
However, Starship will have to do most of the work of slowing down by itself. And as for the belly flop maneuver, I'm not so sure how well this will work in such a thin atmospheric environment. Maybe Starship will belly flop at a higher altitude to give the engines more time to slow down the vertical velocity. It will no doubt have to be much more precise than on Earth. Another challenge when it comes to landing on Mars is the terrain on which Starship will land. There aren't any paved landing sites on Mars yet, so Starship will have to land on a rocky surface. Considering all of these major challenges in actually getting to and landing on Mars, I think it's very possible that SpaceX spends the second half of this decade just trying to successfully land on Mars. Keep in mind that the window for launching to Mars is only open once every 26 months. So SpaceX only has two, maybe three windows within the latter half of the 2020s. In the meantime, this would be a perfect opportunity to complete the Dear Moon project and potentially land on the moon. This also gives them plenty of time to set up Starlink and get that to a point where it is actually profitable. Anyways, if SpaceX is able to successfully land on Mars by 2030, they can transition to trying to return to Earth safely. And the first step in returning to Earth is of course launching from Mars. Fortunately, since the Martian atmosphere is so thin, SpaceX expects that Starship should be able to launch from Mars without a booster. This solves a massive problem of not having a booster available, but there's still the issue of fuel. Currently, the plan is to make rocket fuel on Mars using the ice on the surface and the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But the thing is, this requires humans to actually be there. The plan is to send two cargo missions with the materials required to build a propellant production plant followed by two crewed missions. The crews are supposed to set up the production plant after reaching Mars and then use the fuel produced to return to Earth. This is obviously extremely risky as astronauts are basically screwed if anything goes wrong in the entire process. And to make things worse, there's no way of actually testing the equipment on Mars before the astronauts get there. But let's say the entire fuel production process goes well. Even then, we still have several other concerns such as the rocket tipping over. Mars regularly experiences dust storms that come along with extremely fast winds. In fact, speeds up to 113 kilometers per hour have been regularly recorded by probes and rovers sent to Mars. And when Starship is simply chilling on a rocky surface with no support structures, this is not the most assuring of scenarios. Even if Starship doesn't tip over during the storm, it's very possible that debris from the storm damages Starship, which would be a nightmare. Considering these significant dangers, SpaceX would ideally complete several round trips to Mars before they send any astronauts. I'm sure they've already thought of this, and it's likely simply not possible with current technology. However, in that case, I think it would be best if SpaceX simply waited to send astronauts to Mars until they figure out a more robust exit system from Mars. Maybe SpaceX could figure out a way to launch from Mars without refueling. After all, it's just one landing and one takeoff. Moreover, the gravitational force on Mars is less than half of the Earth's gravitational force, not to mention the extremely thin atmosphere. So it's definitely possible and it will happen sooner or later. Another solution would be designing robots that are able to produce rocket fuel on Mars by themselves. This way, they can test the entire system before risking human lives. If SpaceX does end up choosing one of these safer alternatives, we'll probably see them testing the given solution throughout the 2030s. I mean, this is the standard. Falcon 9, for instance, was tested dozens upon dozens of times before it was used to get Bob and Doug to the ISS. In the end, taking all of this into account, a more realistic time frame for SpaceX getting people to Mars is 2040. If SpaceX does decide to go ahead with the more risky plan of getting astronauts to produce fuel on Mars to return home, it's possible that we see crewed Mars missions in the first half of the 2030s. But I think it's quite unlikely that we see crewed Mars missions anytime before that. On the other end of the spectrum, it's very possible that we don't see a crewed Mars mission till 2050. But let's hope that it doesn't take any longer than that. Also, just for the record, I'd be ecstatic to get completely destroyed by Elon Musk and see SpaceX put people on Mars in 2026. Anyways, when do you guys think SpaceX will reach Mars? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys are hoping that we get to Mars sooner rather than later. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.